So hi everyone, welcome to this quiz on Reflection of Light chapter and we are going to be doing some really important questions. So this will be a great to revise the concepts and to practice the questions for you. So get ready for this exciting quiz on the Reflection of Light chapter. Hi, see, I, so I see a lot of folks are out here. So good evening everyone. Uh, thanks for joining in on this quiz. And guys, if you haven't hit the subscribe uh, button for this channel, please hit it right now and click on the notification bell so that you can get notified about these live classes and new videos that we upload. Hi, good evening. Hi, Kapil. Hi, Preeti Das. Hi, uh, Aust Vinayak. Hi, Deepak. So good evening, everyone. Sorry if I'm not able to take everybody's name here. And guys, guys, as you know, we have this uh, manochaacademy.com website. So do check it out. We have these courses for physics, CBSE class 10, uh, physics, CBSE class 9 and the physics ICSE class 9 full course. So you'll really benefit from these courses because we have interactive videos, quizzes and questions for you to practice and you can ask doubts and get direct replies from me. All right, guys. So are you ready for this reflection of light quiz? Let's get started. So let's dive right into it. So here's our first question. So based on this diagram, you need to find the angle of reflection. So guys, what do you think is the answer here? So hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, light quiz. And here's our first question. Right. So find the angle of reflection. So is it a 30 degree, b 45 degree, c 60 degree or is it d 90 degree? What do you guys think? So great. I'm seeing a lot of answers here. So let's see how how do we do this question? Let's analyze it. So one really important thing is remember the angle of incidence and angle of reflection is measured with the normal. So first we should draw our normal here, right? So this is our normal and you know the normal is at a 90 degree, right? And this is also 90. It's 90 degree to the mirror. Okay. So guys, what is the angle of incidence here first? So what is the angle of incidence? You know, it's the angle, the incident ray. This is our incident ray. Can you see that? So this is our incident ray. So the angle, the incident ray makes with the normal. And what is the angle of incidence? So it's going to be 90 minus 30, right? So this angle I is going to be 90 minus 30. So that's 60 degrees, right? And so guys, what do you think is going to be the angle of reflection? So now it's pretty simple. Very good. I see a lot of you got the correct answer. So uh, as you know, the angle of reflection and the angle of incidence are equal, right? That's based on the laws of reflection of light. Angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So since angle of incidence is 60 degree, angle of in uh, reflection will also be 60 degree here. So our ray is going to reflect like this, right? So this will be our reflected ray and the angle of reflection here R is also going to be 60 degrees. So the correct answer is C. Excellent. I see a lot of you got the correct answer. Very good. In case some of you wrote 30, doesn't matter. Take care to note that angle of incidence and reflection is always measured with the normal. So this is a bit of a tricky question. It will be 90 minus 30. Great guys. Now let's move on to the next question. So as I mentioned in the last class, or you might have seen in my videos, the spoon is a great example of a, uh, a spherical mirror, right? So the front shiny part of the spoon, is it a plane mirror, a concave mirror, a convex mirror or none of these? So next time when you play with your spoon, just check which type of mirror is it. And if you are holding up the spoon, so if you're holding up the spoon and looking at the front part of the spoon, so what do you think is the correct answer? And here I have this picture for you, right? So I'm looking into the spoon and here you can see in this picture, this is what we are talking about. This is the front portion of the spoon. So is it a plane mirror, B concave mirror, C convex or D none of these? What do you guys think? So I see a lot of concave, convex as the answer. So one hint is, can you see, if you look carefully here, can you see that I'm inverted? So this is me standing in front of the spoon. And can you see that I'm inverted in this picture, right? I'm upside down, right? Here's my head. Can you see that? So this is my head. So what type of mirror forms an inverted image? Excellent. 
So the correct answer here is going to be the right answer is it's a concave mirror, right? So when you're looking at the front part of the spoon, that is a concave mirror. And why is that? Because as you can see, the spoon is curved. So the spoon is curved like this, right? Inwards. And so if this is the back portion here, we are looking from this way. So uh, can you see that it's a concave mirror? And an easy way to remember it, it's as if you're going into a cave, right? So if you're looking from this side, it's curved inward. So as if you're entering a cave, so the correct answer is front portion is a concave mirror. Great. And the back portion, you can try it yourself. The back portion of the shiny uh, part of the spoon. So the back portion is going to be a convex mirror because spoon is uh, silvered or shiny on both sides. Excellent. Guys, now let's try the next question here. So which type of mirror is used as a side view mirror in the cars? And here I have this picture here for you. So a side view mirror means the mirror on the side of the cars. There's another type of mirror which is inside the car called the rear view mirror. And here we are talking about the side view mirror as you can see in the picture here. So guys, what do you think is it? Is it A, plane mirror, B, concave mirror, C, convex, or is the answer D, none of these? So good, I can see a lot of answers there. Some are saying plain, some are saying convex. So one thing, uh, this is a little bit confusing because if you look at the mirror, it almost looks like a plain mirror. So if you see the side view mirror of a car, it almost looks plain because it has a very slight curve. It's not very curved, but it is actually a curved mirror. So there is a bit of curvature in the mirror and the side view mirror and the rear view mirror of cars are curved. Now, why do they curve the mirror? Because you want a greater field of view. The driver wants to see as much in the side view mirror and in the rear view mirror as possible. And which mirror do you think gives a greater field of view? Excellent. I see the right answer there. So the correct answer is convex mirror. And the reason is because convex mirror gives a greater field of view. Okay. So it is a great mirror to use as a side view mirror in cars or the rear view mirror or you know a shop security mirror because it gives a greater field of view. The only confusing part is as I mentioned it, these mirrors look uh, plain because they are only slightly curved but they are definitely curved because they want to give a greater field of view. Excellent I see a lot of you got the right answer convex mirror right. So superb guys you guys are doing great. Now try this question for me. You need to find the angle of reflection in this case. Okay. So what do you think it's going to be? A 0 degree, B 30 degree, C 60 degree or D 90 degree. Okay guys try it. Uh, it's really awesome. All of you are uh, being really interactive and trying the answers on the chat. So that's great. Uh, please try these questions. It's okay if you get it right or wrong. Doesn't matter try to get the concept here, right? We're trying to go over the important questions and concepts uh, in this class. So please pay uh, full attention and I'm sure things will be crystal clear to you. Okay, so first thing when you look at this, what type of mirror is this? So as you can see, this is a convex mirror. Why? Because this is the back portion, right? So can you see that this is the back non reflecting side and this is the reflecting side. So it's bulging outwards. So in this convex mirror, uh, what rule do we apply here? Because we can see this is our incident ray. So can you see that? This is the incident ray here. And it's hitting the pole. So it's hitting this P, the pole of the mirror at an angle of 30 degree. So some of you are writing 30, 60. Think about it. So here, this is not a plane mirror question. It's a spherical or a convex mirror question. So what rule we should use? So the we know that the ray is going to go something like this, right? And the important rule is, uh, oops, the ray went away. So I'll draw it again. Okay. So that's our reflected ray here. So let me write that. So this is our reflected ray. And uh, as you know, when the ray is incident at the pole, there's a rule uh, in physics, which says that this angle of reflection here is also going to be 30 degrees. Okay, so uh, it will be the same angle. So it's going to be 30. So the correct answer is B, 
very good 30 degree is the right answer here now why is that so you can see that this curved mirror is uh, almost behaving like a plane mirror at the pole right because the reason is as you know the spherical mirror is made up of tiny tiny uh, plane mirrors you can, you can consider that and so here this principal axis here so the, this line you know is the principal axis so this is acting as a normal on the plane, plane mirror so that's why this rule that when it hits at the pole the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are going to be equal so remember this rule uh, remember the uh, concave and convex mirror have four rules of uh, rays of light so this is that fourth rule where you need to apply that at the pole so guys at the pole angle i will equal to angle r so for this special case and so it's going to be 30 degrees over here okay excellent now let's take a look at the next question so for a shaving mirror where should the face be so we say the case of a shaving mirror or sometimes we call it a makeup mirror also right so in this picture you can see i'm using it as a shaving mirror right where should your face be placed so should it be A, between the pole and the focus of the mirror, B, at the focus, C, between focus and C, uh, between F and C, which is focus and center of curvature, or beyond C? So guys, what do you think is the answer here? Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of answers there. So it's great you guys are trying. So first thing, please think that what type of mirror is used for a shaving mirror? So guys, what is the mirror that is used for a shaving mirror? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of answers. So what mirror is used for a shaving mirror or a makeup mirror? That's right. The correct answer is we use a concave mirror. And the whole goal in this mirror is to uh, get a magnified image, right? Because when you're shaving or uh, uh, when you're applying makeup, right? You want a magnified version of your face so that it's easy to shave or to put makeup, right? So this, the image that you're seeing here, right? My face is not so big. This is actually a magnified image of my face, right? So I'm seeing my face bigger in the, uh, in this concave mirror so that it's easy for me to shape. And you know that for a concave mirror, right? So if you consider a concave mirror, right? So that's it. that is our concave mirror here. So where should we place the object? So that's the pole focus and center of curvature where should the object be placed so that you can get a magnified image and the right answer is it should be between the pole and the focus so here note that the face is the object here right so the face is the object and to get a magnified version of the face you need to keep uh, the face between the pole and the focus so the correct answer very good i see a lot of you have got the right answer excellent it's a between the pole and the focus of the concave mirror okay and this is the case where the concave mirror it's a special case it gives a magnified version of your uh, of the image here the object is the face so it's going to be a magnified version of the face great now let's take a look at the next question the center of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is called a the pole b the focus c center of curvature or d aperture okay so guys i think this is a pretty simple question so i want all of you to try here that what do you think is the answer of this and uh, remember this term spherical mirror so there are two types of spherical mirror as shown here right so it can be either a concave mirror or it could be a convex mirror as shown here right so we are talking about the center of uh, the reflecting surface of a, a spherical mirror which could be a concave or a convex mirror so now where's the center here guys so can you see this is the center and in the convex mirror here is the center so what is this point which is the center of the reflecting surface known as okay so i see some of you are writing center of curvature be careful center of curvature is not the answer so don't be confused by this word center because it's saying center of the reflecting surface so that's why i gave this question this is a common confusion that this is the reflecting surface here guys so if you look at this concave mirror this is the reflecting surface and the center of the reflecting surface is right here where i put the yellow dot can you see that so the yellow dot is the center of the reflecting surface and as you know that is the pole of the mirror 
Similarly, for the convex mirror, the center is called the pole here, right? So very good. Many of you got the correct answer. So the answer is pole. And if you are having a confusion with the center of curvature, let me explain it to you. So center of curvature means when you complete the sphere or the circle, right? So if you complete the sphere or the circle, if you consider it in two dimension, then the center of the circle or the center of the sphere is called the center of curvature C. But here note the question says center of the reflecting surface, not the center of the sphere, not the center of the circle. Okay. And that's why C is not the correct answer. It's not center of curvature. It's A, the pole. Excellent. I see a lot of you have got the right answer. Superb. So please remember these important points, right? And don't confuse between the pole and center of curvature. Now let's take a look at this question. Which type of mirror forms a real image? Okay. So is it A, plane mirror? B, concave mirror? Is it C, convex mirror? or D, none of these. So guys, think about this. Which type of mirror forms a real image? So the question is a real image. Now think about what is a real image? One, we know a real image is formed on uh, something that can be formed on a screen. And another very important property of a real image, which you guys must be knowing, that a real image is always inverted. That's why we write real and inverted. Okay, because you know that virtual images are upright. So it's virtual and upright and real images always inverted. So let's start with the options here because uh, in a multiple choice or in a quiz, you can even eliminate even if you don't know the answer. So if you look at the first option, a plane mirror, guys, do you see yourself ever inverted in a plane mirror? No, you see yourself upright, hopefully, right? So it's clearly a plane mirror always gives a virtual image so that's not possible right and uh, you guys know that a convex mirror right like the mirror used uh, we discussed in the side view mirror of a car we just saw that right so side view of a mirror of a car it also gives a virtual image because you don't want uh, the driver to be seeing inverted images of the road right there's going to be an accident so a convex mirror is also a mirror which always always gives a virtual image and a plane mirror also gives a virtual image it's only the concave mirror which can give a real and inverted image. Okay, guys. And as we saw that earlier in this class today, right? So where I showed you the picture of the spoon, where I was looking into the mirror and remember the answer was concave and I'm inverted there. And you can try this with the spoon. You'll see your face inverted when you uh, bring it at the, move it to the right position. Okay. So the concave mirror can give a inverted and a real image. So excellent. The correct answer, many of you got it right, is a concave mirror. So always for these things, uh, think carefully. Don't jump to the answer. Analyze the question so that you don't make a silly mistake, right? So that's great. Now let's take a look at our next question. What does this say? Radius of curvature of a convex mirror is 30 centimeters. Find the focal length or what is the focal length? Okay, so great. I see a lot of you are trying. It's really amazing to see that all of you are uh, in the quiz and trying the questions. So go ahead and try this one. And always for these types of questions, it's best to write it in some symbol form, right? It's almost like a sum here. So we uh, denote the radius of curvature R as with the symbol, uh, radius of curvature, the symbol capital R. So I'm going to say, what does the data tell us? R equals 30 centimeters. Okay. And what does the question ask? We need to find the focal length f okay so guys what is the relation between radius of curvature and focal length so if we quickly draw this uh, so let me draw a quick picture of the convex mirror so this is the convex mirror here right uh, sorry if my diagram is not very perfect I'm just drawing it quickly that's our pole here uh, let me just label the pole quickly here I'll write it here P uh, this is F and this is the center of curvature C okay and uh, so what is the focal length here? So guys, the focal length is the distance between the pole and the focus and the radius of curvature R is the distance between P and C, right? And uh, remember this really important point that the focus lies exactly between P and C. So this distance, if it's uh, X, then this is also X, right? 
So what is the relation between radius of curvature and the focus, focal length? R equals 2 times F. Okay. So can you see that? The focal length is half the radius of curvature or we can say the radius of curvature is double of the focal length. Okay. So R equals 2F because can you see F lies between P and C. So clearly R is bigger. And now if you uh, just do the maths here. So F is going to be basically R by 2. And what does that work out to be? 30 by 2. So what is our answer here guys? We are going to get 15 centimeters. Excellent. I see a lot of you have got 15. Some of you uh, got 60. Don't double it. We are talking about the focal length. What is the definition of focal length? As you can see here, the distance between the pole and the focus. Okay. And the radius of curvature is the distance between P and C R. Okay. So please remember this formula R equals 2F or you can learn F equals R by 2. And if you apply it, you get the correct answer, which is 15 centimeter. So very good. And guys, don't forget the unit. Many times in the test, we just write 15 and then we say, oh, the teacher cut our marks, right? So don't uh, forget to write. The unit is very, very important. Okay. I remember in my school days, our physics teacher would give us zero if we forgot to write the unit. Okay. So that really helped us to remember that we must write the units. So don't just say 15, 15 centimeters. Don't forget the units especially in physics questions, right? Okay, now let's take a look at the next question. So what does this say? Where will the parallel rays in the diagram below meet after reflection? So take a careful look at this question, guys. So will, it, will the reflected rays uh, meet at the A, the pole, or B, at the center of curvature, C, at the focus, or D, on the focal plane? So guys, what do you think? Uh, so this is a little tricky question, right? Uh, you might have seen this in your textbooks or maybe you can go back and check. So where do you think these parallel rays are going to meet? Okay, so I see a lot of you are writing C, the focus. Let's take a look uh, if that's our right answer. So I'm just going to draw this here. So I'll draw the concave mirror. As you can see in this picture, right? The mirror is a concave mirror. And we have pole, focus and center of curvature here, right? So remember uh, this uh, simple diagram that if you take parallel rays, which are parallel to the principal axis. So first I'm drawing the simplified di diagram, not the one in the question here. So if I take parallel rays, which are parallel to the principal axis, then we are confident that they will meet at the focus. Okay. So guys, take a look here at my rough diagram. So the parallel rays, uh, which are parallel to the principal axis, principal axis, remember, is this line joining P and C. So rays that are parallel to the principal axis after converging, because concave mirror converges them, they will all meet at the focus. But this interesting question, the parallel rays, can you see, they are not parallel to the principal axis. So guys, C uh, at the focus is not the correct answer. Because you can imagine uh, that if you take this ray, we had just discussed, right? So this second ray here, you know, it's going to go something like this. Because remember, at the pole, oops, some magic is happening again. The ray is gone. So let me draw it again here. Okay. So guys, uh, do you remember this thing? That if we take this angle to be 30, we had seen it, right? This will also be 30. So clearly you can see the rays won't meet at the so great, I'm seeing a lot of you are giving the correct answer now. The answer is going to be, so let's take a look at it. Uh, it's going to be D, right? And why is that? So what is the meaning of this term? Focal plane. So first, let's see where these rays are going to go. So focal plane is basically the plane which is passing through the focus. So plane means something which is two dimensional, right? A flat surface. Here we've just uh, shown it with the help of a line, uh, right? So this is uh, what I marked here with the dotted line is the focal plane. And these rays after reflection, okay, so they're going to meet at the focal plane here. So the diagram is going to look something like this. Again, excuse my rough drawing. Okay, I'm trying to show you the concept here. So the, the reflected rays are going to meet not at the focus, but on a plane passing through the focus. So this is a tricky question, very important. Great, I see Shubra Day. A lot of you folks have got the correct answer. D, uh, PUBG, Canada, right? 
uh, Kapil, great. D is the correct answer here. So the right answer is on the focal plane. And remember, it's not at the focus because that is this diagram. So this is not going to be the answer here. It's on the focal plane. And because the parallel rays are not parallel to the principal axis. The rays are parallel, but they are not parallel to the principal axis. So after reflection, they will meet at some point which will lie along the focal plane. So please remember this important tricky question. Okay, excellent guys. Let's move on to the next question. Which type of mirror obeys the laws of reflection? So guys, what do you think is the answer here? Is it plane mirror, concave mirror, convex mirror or D, all of these? So what is the answer here? Which type of mirror obeys the laws of reflection? And you remember the laws of reflection, the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence, they all lie on the same plane. Remember that big law, right? There are two laws of reflection and the second law is the simpler one, uh, which say, states that angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So what do you think is the answer here? I see a lot of answers, uh, A, B, C, D, okay? So uh, remember that a plane mirror definitely obeys the laws of reflection. Okay, so plane mirror, it obeys the laws of reflection and even spherical mirrors, the curved mirrors, which are concave and convex mirror, they are also nice mirrors. They obey the laws of reflection. Okay, because remember I told you the plane mirror, uh, the curved mirror is, can, you can think it consists of many tiny, tiny plane mirrors. So whenever the ray hits, it is definitely obeying the law of reflection where angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So excellent. I see a lot of you have got the right answer. So please remember all these mirrors, plane mirror, concave mirror, convex mirror, they all obey the laws of reflection. It's, it doesn't just work for the plane mirror. So the correct answer here is D. Excellent. Now let's take a look at this interesting question. If the magnification M, remember M is the symbol of magnification. If the magnification M in a mirror is minus two, which one is the image of the boy? So look here, I've got the picture of the boy here. So here you can consider the boy. He's the object who's standing in front of the mirror, right? So if, um, if he's standing in front of a mirror, which gives a magnification of minus two, which one is going to be the image? Is it A, B, C or D? So those are your options here on the screen. So guys, what do you think here? So when the boy, look here. So the boy here is our object, right? So this is the boy. He's standing in front of a mirror. So this boy, he stands in front of a mirror. So it's not specified which type of mirror is it. So it could be a plane, concave or convex. But we are given that the magnification is minus two. So which one can be the image of the boy? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of uh, good answers here. So all of you, please try this question. It's an interesting one. So how do we analyze this question? So magnification minus two. So this number has, uh, if we break it into two parts, there's a negative sign and a two. Okay, so the negative sign, so the plus or minus tells us whether the image is inverted or is it upright? Okay, so minus means uh, it is an inverted image. If it was plus two, that means it's a upright or erect image, right? So the boy is definitely seeing a inverted image because there's a negative sign. And the number two tells us that how is the image height uh, compared to the object height. And remember the magnification formula, image height by object height. Or in your books, you might see it as H dash by H. Okay, so here's our dash here. So H dash by H. So if you apply the formula H dash by H equals two. So the image height is basically two times the object height. So this tells us that the image height is twice the object height. Okay, so take a careful look at this question. M equals minus two. So just split the number into two parts. First, take a look at the sign. Minus tells us it's inverted. Okay, minus doesn't mean it's diminished minus or plus tells us is it inverted or upright so negative means can you see it is inverted here so the image is inverted because there's a minus sign here and the two tells us it's two times why because based on this magnification formula h dash by h 
So the image height is two times the object height. So guys, what will be the correct answer here? You need to look for the image which is twice as big as the boy and invert it. And guys, the correct answer, as I can see here from a lot of you, it is D. Okay, perfect. Because it is twice and can you see the boy is inverted here. So he's inverted here and he's twice the size compared to that object. Great, excellent. Now let's move on to the next question. For a concave mirror, where should the object be placed for the image to be formed at infinity? Okay, so take a look, careful look at this question. So should the object be placed A at infinity, B at the center of curvature, C at the focus or D between the pole and the focus? Okay, so all of you please try this question. And uh, one way to uh, do this question is you can remember the table in your book, right? So uh, depending on the position of the object where the image is going to be formed or you can quickly roughly sketch out uh, the diagrams and try this yourself, right? So I see a lot of good answers here. Some of you are saying C, some are saying D. Where do you think the uh, object needs to be placed here? Okay, so note here that the image needs to be formed at infinity. So the image needs to be at infinity. So this is a very special case where uh, how will the image be formed at infinity when the reflected rays okay so when the reflected rays are parallel because you know that parallel rays they never never meet right it's like railway tracks never meet they are parallel lines so parallel rays they never meet so we say that they meet at infinity or the image is formed at infinity okay and so guys you might know this special case the correct answer is the object needs to be placed at the focus so let's take a look if that gives us our image at infinity so we can use our light ray rules here so let's draw the line which is parallel to the principal axis and you know that this is going to pass through the focus right so after reflection this ray passes through the focus and for the other rule we can use the ray of light which is passing through the center of curvature oops let me draw it again i'll just extend this mirror a bit here so the ray of light passing through the center of curvature, you know it's going to get reflected back along this path. So the ray of light as if it was coming from the center of curvature, right? So as if it was coming from here. So after reflection, it's going to go back and go back this way. So let me draw that again. It's going to go back this way, right? Okay. And can you see that now the reflected rays, they are parallel here. Can you see guys, the reflected rays are parallel. And so uh, the reflected rays, they never meet, they are parallel here. Okay, and this means that the image is formed at, so the image is going to be formed at infinity here. And so the correct answer is the object needs to be placed where? At the focus. So this is that special place. Very good. The correct answer is C. A lot of you got it. So when the object is placed at the focus and I would encourage you to try drawing this diagram. So draw the object at the focus, uh, practice these uh, light ray rules and remember what we have to do for the light ray rules. You consider the rules from the top of the object. Okay, you don't have to consider from the bottom. So let's say this is our object AB. We've considered the light ray rules from the top of the object. And remember, we need to select any two out of the three rules. So one rule we've used here, the ray of light parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus and the ray of light which was as if it was coming from the center of curvature after, reflect, uh, after reflection it traces back its path right and can you see these parallel rays are uh, these uh, sorry reflected rays are parallel here and so they never meet and the image lies at infinity excellent so this is the uh, correct answer it's c here So now guys, uh, what about this question? By sign convention, object distance for a spherical mirror usually is positive, negative, C, no sign, or is it zero? So what do you guys think? So somebody is asking, what is infinity? Infinity is, uh, it's like a concept, right? Infinity means very, very far, okay? So like uh, the universe, you can think it ends at infinity, right? It just goes on and on and on. So the parallel rays, they never meet. So we say they just keep on going straight on and on. So we uh, can say in other words, they meet at infinity, very, very far. 
okay so that was that previous question now guys take a look at this question by sign convention object distance for a spherical mirror usually is what positive negative no sign or zero so guys what do you think here so first let's draw our object here so let's say this is our object a b and remember for the sign convention let me teach you an easy trick so for sign convention you just need to draw the axes over here right so the axes are drawn over here and they meet at the pole so that's like our origin so this is the positive x-axis this is the negative x-axis the positive y-axis and the negative y-axis okay so this is used for sign convention so any distances which are measured this way they are definitely going to be positive so because they are towards the on the positive x-axis and distances measured this way are negative similarly heights or distances which are measured along the positive y-axis upwards are going to be positive and this one negative so please remember this important diagram so what is the trick of the sign convention place the axis uh, where the origin of the axis or the intersection of the axis is placed at the pole of the mirror so that's for a concave or a convex mirror same rule and then based on that you can just apply your positive negative as you know from mathematics okay so in this case how will we measure the object distance and the other important point is the distances are measured from the pole okay so our object distance u is going to be measured this way right from the pole to the object u so based on this diagram uh, what is the sign convention tell us is the object distance positive or negative so usually you know uh, our convention is the object is placed to the left of the mirror as you can see here and so the correct answer is the object distance is negative excellent i see a lot of correct answers here so very good b is the right answer and please remember this important diagram if ever you have a confusion uh, or even if you don't you must draw these axes okay so must draw these axes and analyze and keep the axis uh, place the center o at the pole okay and then you can easily judge what is positive negative uh, based on this okay so very good guys now let's take a look at this question an object of height 2 centimeters forms a real image of height 1 centimeter in a spherical mirror find the magnification okay so go ahead and try this this is like a sum right where we've been given the height of the object and it forms a real image of height 1 centimeter in a spherical mirror and we need to find the the question is asked find the magnification okay so remember we have discussed what is the magnification formula so m equals h dash by h which is basically image height so height of the image by height of the object so you can remember it whichever way you like hi by ho or h dash by h that is the formula or the definition of magnification it's a ratio of the image height by object height okay so now let's apply the numbers here so what should i write for the image height right so h dash what should it be so if you look here it says image height is two centimeters so should i write two centimeters and object height is one centimeter so is my answer correct so is this the right answer is it going to be uh, oh sorry I, I wrote it inverted so let me just erase this and write it again right the image height is one centimeter my mistake so let's write down the data clearly so h dash over here so h the object height is two centimeter and the image height it says is one centimeter right so if i write one centimeter by two centimeter is this correct what do you guys think here okay so please take a careful look am i right or is there some mistake here can you see the object height we've uh, copied is uh, given here two centimeters so we've written that as h and h dash is given as one centimeter so good some of you are saying no there's uh, some mistake yes because there's a very important thing in this question it's a real image okay and real image guys are always inverted remember we discussed that so a real image is always inverted and if it's an inverted image as we talked about our sign convention the image is going to look something like this right so let's say an inverted image is formed uh, for example let's say here okay 
So if there's an inverted image, it's always going to be below the uh, on the uh, negative y axis, right? It's going to be below the principal axis. So the uh, image height is going to be for a real image or an inverted image, the image height is going to be negative. So I cannot say h dash equals one centimeter. H dash is minus one. Excellent. I see a lot of you guys are saying negative sign. So yes, guys, the sign is very important. Okay, for both the object and the image. So let's quickly recap this so you guys understand. So first we applied the magnification formula h dash by h and the object height is two centimeter and it's going to be plus two, right? Because the object, you know, is always upright. Usually it's taken as upright. So we assume the object is upright here. So that's definitely plus two, the object height. Okay, plus two centimeters. Now, what is the image height going to be? It's given as one centimeter, but because it's a real image, if it was a virtual image, then it would be upright. But a real image, guys, you know, is inverted. So therefore, it's going to be image height is going to be minus one. Don't forget the sign. Sign convention is very, very important. So don't forget your sign convention when doing these questions. Okay. And so what is uh, the final answer going to be? So definitely the unit will cancel here and we are going to be left with minus half. So now do you guys agree the correct answer is minus one by two, not plus one by two. Okay. Image height one centimeter, which was taken as minus one by plus two centimeter. So our correct answer is going to be D here. Okay. Minus half. Excellent. Very good. And guys, I have one question for you to solve. Okay. So what type of mirror is used in a solar furnace? Is it A, a plane mirror, a B, a convex, concave mirror, C, a convex mirror, or D, none of these? So guys, what do you think is the correct option here? And do let me know your answers by putting it in the comments below. So we are not going to solve this one here. I want you to write the answer in the comments below. And you can also write the one line reason why, right? So please give me your reason also. So what do you feel is the reason for choosing why you've chosen either you've chosen a plane mirror a concave mirror a convex mirror or none of these so do let me know your answer and your reason by writing it in the comments below i look forward to reading everyone's comments and uh, i promise you to reply to you as soon as possible and guys i'd like to hear your feedback so i hope you enjoyed this session right where we did a lot of important questions on uh, the light chapter I hope you uh, cleared a lot of concepts in this video and uh, things are more clear to you now. So it was a great session where we had a lot of questions uh, answered and I see a lot of you were interacting and really answering it fast. So that's great. And do try this homework question. What type of mirror is used in a solar furnace and write it in your uh, the answer in your comments below. OK, and guys, as I mentioned earlier, we have this website manochaacademy.com. So guys, do check it out. We have the Physics CBSE Class 10 course, the Physics CBSE Class 9 course. And also, we've just newly launched the Physics ICSC Class 9 course. So guys, do check it out. I'll put the links below. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button for our YouTube channel, Manocha Academy, hit the subscribe button right now and go click the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the live classes or any of the videos that we upload. So thanks a lot for your support. And a lot of you are asking, when is the live session? I'll try to take one again tomorrow. We are having these live sessions every day at 8 p.m. Uh, except I think Sundays. So Sundays I'm taking a break and rest and you guys also should enjoy your Sunday. Uh, so we are having these classes daily. Uh, so guys, do share it out to your friends also so that they can also join in these live classes and together we can have fun with physics, chemistry and mathematics. So we are having live classes for all these subjects, physics, chemistry, mathematics for class nine and 10. And many of these topics are relevant for class seven and eight also. So take a look at the um, uh, notifications that you get and subscribe to our channel. And if you haven't hit the like for this uh, class, uh, do hit the like button right now. So thanks guys for liking and sharing. And it's really amazing to uh, read and uh, hear all your feedback in the comments. I definitely read all the comments and try to reply to them as soon as I can. Thanks a lot. Uh, great session. You guys were very interactive. So uh, take care. Bye bye. Hope you enjoyed the session guys. Bye.